Have you ever written a message extension for Microsoft Teams or Outlook and noticed that there's a bot involved? Maybe you've wondered, what is this bot doing here? Well, in this video, I'll explain what's going on. Hi, I'm Bob German, Cloud Developer Advocate at Microsoft, and this is Microsoft 365 Developer Essentials. The use of bots for more than chat is something I call bots as plumbing where Teams or Outlook uses the Azure Bot Framework for features that aren't chatbots. Those features are specifically message extensions and adaptive card actions, which have used the Bot Framework since version one of Microsoft Teams. These bot-based message extensions also work as Copilot plugins in Microsoft 365. More recently, Microsoft introduced API-based message extensions and plugins that call an application's API directly without using the bot framework. I'll have more information on that at the end of this video. But first, let me explain bots as plumbing and show you all the scenarios where it works. Here's a simple message extension. There's a link in the show notes to a hands-on lab where you can build this and try it for yourself. I can search for a product and see a list of requests and then click one to bring up an adaptive card with the product details. I can even interact with the card to update the product details. Now, here's the app manifest for this application. And you can see the message extension here under its historical name, Compose Extension. Notice there's a command for searching the inventory. I explained that part in another video, so this time I'm going to ignore those details and focus on the bot part. See how there's a bot registration? There's actually two of them, one for the chat bot and one for the message extension. In this case, the Teams Toolkit will register a bot and fill in its ID here, but you could do that yourself by registering the bot in the Azure portal and placing its ID in here. Let me explain how this works. Consider a regular chat bot. Users might access the bot in any of several applications, such as Teams and Outlook, of course, but also including third-party apps like Slack, Facebook Messenger, or Twilio. The bot channel service unifies all these options and provides a single REST interface to your app. It's a two-way service interface secured using client credential flow in Entra ID. Each bot needs an app registration in Entra ID and the bot ID is actually the client ID of this application. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. If you use Teams Toolkit, it will take care of all the details. Anyway, the good part is that you can write a bot that talks to any of these applications and then just configure the channels you want. You may have seen this kind of screen in the Azure portal or even in Copilot Studio or Power Virtual Agents. There's a dedicated channel, not to be confused with a channel in a team, but a channel for Teams bots and another for Microsoft 365 apps in general, such as message extensions in Outlook and Copilot for Microsoft 365. So what's going on in that service? Well, it's actually a two-way protocol between your app and the channel service. And what's going back and forth is called activities. These are sent between the bot channel service and your app. The classic example of an activity for a chatbot is a message activity, which can contain text and other attachments. However, message extensions and plugins use another kind of activity called an invoke activity. For example, when I entered a product name in the message extension, my app received an invoke activity from the Teams channel saying that someone had typed some characters. Now let's look at the code where this happens. Here we are in that same sample application and there's a module called searchapp.ts, which creates a class which extends Teams Activity Handler, which is basically a bot. Now the code overwrites the handle Teams messaging extension query method. And every time somebody interacts with a message extension, this is gonna be called. Also, when somebody acts on the adaptive card, this on adaptive card invoke is gonna be called. So now the code handles it from there and responds with an appropriate adaptive card or updated adaptive card. Now let's talk for a moment about your development environment. Teams apps can run on the client side to present web content, basically in a Teams tab or in Outlook or the Microsoft 365 app. And also there's a server which is serving up those web pages as well as in this case, talking 
to the Bot Builder SDK. Notice that the REST API calls are flowing in both directions. So if you're hosting in someplace like Azure on a, with a public URL, that works fine and it's secured by Entra ID. If you're working locally, however, you're gonna need a tunnel to bring those requests in from the bot framework into your application, which is behind, presumably behind a, a firewall. Traditionally, developers used a tool called ngrok for this tunnel, but lately people have been using the Microsoft developer tunnels, which are automatically set up for you by Teams Toolkit. Now there are two places you can set up your bot registration. One is here in the Teams developer portal, and this is where Teams Toolkit puts your local bots when you're debugging locally. It prevents you from having to have an Azure subscription in order to work with bots. However, for more advanced scenarios, and even when deploying from Teams Toolkit into Azure, you're gonna get a formal bot registration that can be an Azure resource. Recently, Microsoft has been working to provide an easier path for developers, which is direct API access to message extensions and Copilot plugins. This requires describing the API to Microsoft 365 as part of the app manifest. And this uses a standard open API specification plus additional metadata. This allows developers to work with any API technology they choose and not be tied to the bot framework. Potentially, this could allow reusing or adapting existing APIs for integration with Microsoft 365. Please check the show notes for links to a video on API message extensions and for Copilot API plugins to the session that David Rousset and I did at Build last month. And yes, if you're working locally, you'll still need a tunnel. I'm hoping this video helps you understand how the bot framework is used for more than just chatbots in Microsoft 365 apps and what Microsoft is offering as an alternative. If you like this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our videos on Microsoft 365 development. Thanks, and I'll see you next time on Microsoft 365 Dev Essentials.